All right. Um, blame for this talk uh, belongs to me. Um, however, I have coworkers, and they're actually largely responsible for uh, the success of this little project. Um, there's also one other person who uh, needs credit, and that is an anonymous uh, Debian user. Um, so if we start at the beginning, uh, RFC 1883 actually defines what the IPv6 protocol specification looks like, um, and it includes the structure of uh, the new IP header. In the new IP header, uh, there's a 20-bit field, which is known as the flow label. Um, so what do you do with this? Um, well, the idea originally was that uh, you would build new routers um, that utilize uh, flow caching um, once you've identified a flow uh, to um, speed up forwarding lookups. Um, on the left-hand side, you see a uh, circa 1969 to 1989 packet switch. On the right, you see uh, a modern one. Um, packet switches are actually bounded by the worst case uh, forwarding situation. In the right, that's less than 1,000 packets per second, or uh, uh, on the right, and it's 5 billion. Um, okay, so uh, what happens here? RFC 1883 is pretty unequivocal. All packets in the same flow must be sent with the same source address, destination address, priority, and flow label. That's pretty clear. Um, unfortunately, we didn't exactly stick with that. Um, so uh, about 2011, we uh, came out with uh, an effort to rehabilitate the flow label, and we said a node that forwards a, a flow whose flow label value in arriving packets is zero may change the flow label. May? What kind of sociopath changes the flow label of packets in, in flight? Well, it turns out it's us. But um, a we also said a forwarding node must either leave a non-zero flow label value unchanged or change it only for compelling operational security reasons. Okay, so that basically gives you a license to do whatever you want. Um, okay, so uh, we have hashing problems because we actually need to distribute uh, incoming flows among multiple servers. Uh, we need to do this statelessly for... Uh, scale reasons, um, and so we're actually sort of uh, concerned about being able to do the same thing in IPv6 as we were uh, in IPv4. Um, okay, so this is an actual flow. Um, the first packet that you see there is a SYN. Uh, the second packet is the ACK from the same device. Uh, there's an interesting problem there, and that is that the flow label is different. The third packet is also from that device and is... Um, uh, a TCP reset, it has a different um, flow label as well. Okay, so here was the initial flow label. Um, so we, this was received on a SYN. Um, this arrived on one server. Uh, we replied with a SYNAC. And uh, then we have a small problem. Okay, change. Um, okay, we got an ACK back. This arrived, inconveniently enough, on a different server. Um, and uh, you know, if you look at the transport semantics of this, uh, this has the same uh, source and destination, source port, destination port, uh, as the previous packet. Uh, inconveniently, though, it had a different flow label. Um, okay, this was a reset. Uh, so this was actually in response to us sending a reset towards them. Um, they sent us another one, a uh, different flow label uh, as well. And the reason uh, this, as it turns out, is because uh, the firewall in between the original sender and us uh, had already forgotten about this particular flow. Okay, so um, this was actually discovered by a uh, Debian user in Portugal. Um, Debian users are great because they have a tendency to be able to send you PCAPs uh, when they encounter problems, which is quite unusual for end users. Um, you can see that uh, this machine actually sent uh, two packets with the same flow label. Okay, who's responsible for this? Um, well. CPE that belongs to an ISP in Portugal, um, which is actually quite popular in France as well. Uh, some people ship these things uh, IPv6 enabled by default. It turns out that if you also enable QOS, um, they have a tendency to change the flow label. Okay, so who is actually responsible for this? Uh, ISPs, you know. Um, we kind of did this to ourselves. And... Um, in our zeal to deploy this, uh, we've actually come up with uh, several variations of this uh, over time. Um, 
So uh, flow label zero uh, was quite common for a very long time. Uh, Linux systems are sort of notorious for that until they uh, got beyond that and actually started creating them. Um, but uh, we've actually seen uh, other devices do this in the wild, so this particular one was not exactly uh, unique. And that's not on the uh, 20 second timer. Can I make it go forward? Okay. Um, turns out there are some devices that are in your data centers that may actually be using the flow label as a hash component and you don't know it. Um, I had a, a particular variety of switch uh, where that was not visible until uh, one probed around in the ASIC with the SDK. Um, so uh, it turns out that um, Problems with large-scale projects like the deployment of IPv6 uh, have kind of a long history. Um, we're kind of talking past each other um, with respect to what we expect protocol implementations to do, and the more times we add options, uh, we get to this particular situation. Um, so um, it turns out you can put anything you want in a dumpster. Um, there are some things, however, if you mix them together, are kind of combustible. Um, so we had to remove the flow label as a hashing component um, from our systems. Um, and you know, when we look at uh, vendor implementations, obviously we sort of demand visibility into what is actually being used as hash components. Um, but uh, you know, the question of what it is that you can do with the flow label actually comes up kind of frequently in um, you know, the context of our industry. Um, my recommendation? Let's see if I can get this to advance. Uh, don't do anything. Um, if somebody recommends that you do something with the flow label internally, uh, I would uh, uh, encourage them to find a nice beach. And, but uh, because if you do something internally, undoubtedly at some point it will leak, right? Or other people will do it. Um, the best thing that we can do actually is to stop creating advice for it and actually pretend like it doesn't exist. Um, that is actually the uh, option that has uh, the least amount of damage uh, to be applied in this case. Uh, and with that, I am done. So if there are any questions. Excellent.